Good morning. All right, we are in 1 Samuel chapter 15 today, reading verses 1 through 9. Let's go ahead and pray, then we will read the scripture for today. Father God, you are so good. Um, God, we um, also acknowledge that you are uh, completely just, that you do not forget the trespasses of those who have not been redeemed, who have not repented. We pray that today as we read um, the scripture that we would learn about you as you have told us of yourself, the way you have revealed yourself to us, that we would not shy away from who you are, but that we would be instructed in how we uh, are to behave, how we are to believe, how we are to obey, and God, help us to be thankful to you for your character and um, the blessing you've so richly shown us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, let's go ahead and read 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 9. And Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have anointed what or I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 men on foot, and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek, and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, go down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah, as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fattened calves, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless they devoted to destruction." God's word to us today in the book of 1 Samuel. All right, let's observe. We see that Samuel came to Saul with a message from the Lord. He commanded Saul to destroy the Amalekites and devote to destruction all that they have. Man, woman, child, infant, every animal. All that they have. Saul raised 200,000 men on foot and 10,000 men of Judah. They encamped told the Kenites to escape from among the Amalekites for the kindness they showed Israel. Saul devoted all the people to destruction, but spared Agag. They devoted all that was despised and worthless to destruction, but they kept all that was good, or all that they saw value in. All right. So passages like this um, can be difficult to read because it's hard for us to comprehend uh, what's going on here. Um, it's, it is difficult for us when we think of our God as God of love <laughs> to understand why he would command something like this. But he is a God of love, and he loves his people. Which means he also takes vengeance on those who are cruel and oppose his people. Love, as we know, has two sides to it. There is the love you show those you love, but there is also the protection that you show uh, for those you love. Which means vengeance against those who hurt those you love, those that belong to you. And we see this all the time in, in Hollywood, and we almost revel in it, you know, when 
the hero's family is killed, we revel in the fact that he goes and he destroys every last one of those people who hurt his family. You can think of movies like John Wick, which, I mean, his dog is killed, right? And then he kills dozens of people. Uh, and, and we somehow feel vindicated in that. Or the movie Taken, where you know his daughter is kidnapped and he goes and uses his skills to um, take vengeance on those people. And, and we even though it's difficult to see the violence sometimes, or to think of it, and it should be difficult for us to see violence, we note that we feel justified, or he is justified in taking that vengeance because he is protecting his family and he's destroying bad people. Yet somehow, when we come to a passage like this, we think, well, God is love. Why would he hurt anyone? God protects those he loves. He loves, he takes vengeance upon those who hurt those he loves. And furthermore, he loves his own justice, his own character, even more than anything else. And those who reject the Lord and, and act in opposition to the character of God stand in a place where they are judged for that as well. And so he takes vengeance upon people for their behavior towards him also. And we need to remember what the Amalekites did, or what Amalek did to the people of Israel as when they were weak, exposed, coming up out of Egypt. He cruelly attacked them when they were weak. Um, he would not let them pass by. And God at that time gave victory to Israel over them. But he also promised in Deuteronomy, that he would not forget, and they should not forget what Amalek did to them, and that he would be an enemy to Amalek for all its, his generations. Not just Amalek, but everyone coming after him. He, the Lord promised this, and that he would blot them out from history. So, um, now, um, he, they're recorded in the Bible, so the memory of them remains, but they are no longer a people. Um, so when God comes to Samuel, gives him the message for Saul to devote the Amalekites to destruction, it is an acknowledgement that they are getting what is due to them. And it's not just Amalek. They have continued to be a cruel people. And we will read more about that later. They have continued to be cruel. The nation of the Amalekites is a cruel, um, dishonorable nation that does not fear the Lord. <clears throat> now God tells Saul to devote, to, to, to devote all of them and everything they have to destruction. And this, um, this term, devote to destruction, should remind us of Joshua. Right? We, we see the Lord referring thing, uh, to uh, this uh, method, this behavior in, in Joshua, when they're told to devote um, Jericho to destruction, which is to destroy everything. And it is actually as um, to devote to destruction. If you look in the, the uh, footnotes of your Bible, it most likely gives you a meaning for that, uh, which is to set apart as an offering to the Lord. For destruction. So this is something God is claiming for himself as an offering, this destruction. Everything. The people and the goods of the Amalekites. And again, this is what was supposed to be done in, in Jericho, if you remember, from Joshua. And so we um, remember what happened when Achan did not devote some things to destruction. I think it was um, a cloak and some silver and gold, like 200 shekels of silver and 50 shekels of gold, something like that. Um, but he, he kept those things and therefore the people of Israel lost their next battle with Ai. And so 
the people of Israel know that God takes this very seriously, this devotion to destruction, yet Saul does not take God's command seriously. He should have obeyed because he wanted to obey the Lord, he and the people. But if not that, then they should at least obey because they fear God's wrath. And, and they know what happened to Achan, Israel, it, and Israel in, in the, the, the scenario with uh, Jericho and the loss to Ai. But again, Saul does not take the command seriously. They, they kill all the people, but they don't kill all of the, the livestock and they, they don't um, destroy all the other goods. They keep everything that they see as good. And so here we see a, a terrible sin against the Lord, not obeying him, not taking his command seriously, letting they let their greed overwhelm their desire to obey the Lord. And we'll see that they try to justify it. But they should have listened to the Lord. We see how significant it is here that God chose the people of Israel that he told them that they are his. Because when we struggle understanding why God destroys some people and then Israel messes up and, and he seems keeps forgiving them, this is because he has chosen them as his. What happens to the, to the Amalekites here is really what Israel deserves all throughout their history and what we deserve as well. If we're honest, we all deserve complete destruction by the Lord. The fact that God chose Israel for his people uh, means that he is patient with them. He is long-suffering. And when they sin, he allows them to come and repent, and he disciplines them, but he does not destroy them. This is because they are blessed, they are his people. For the people that are not his, now of course, uh, in this time that we are reading of in 1 Samuel, it is the nation of Israel that is the Lord's. And it is the other nations that are not. Those other nations sin and they incur the wrath of God. Um, for us, as Christians, we are blessed because we are Christ's. We belong to God. We are God's people. Those who do not belong to Christ will be judged. And God does not call us to go out and kill them and, and um, destroy them. He reserves that judgment for himself on the last day, but it will nonetheless come. And this is a picture to us, what happens to the Amalekites, of what will happen to all of God's enemies, to move us to be thankful for our own salvation, and also to pray for those who are not yet saved, that they might come to a faith in Christ and spare the wrath and be spared the wrath of God that is due to them because of their sin. Now my conclusion from, for today comes from Proverbs. It is Proverbs 9.10 and it is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because again, even if Saul wasn't going to obey because he loved to obey the Lord, he should have at least obeyed because he feared God's wrath. That would have been wise, but he does neither, and he shows himself to be a fool. A fool. Um, may we not find ourselves in that same position. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, please show mercy um, to us. We thank you that you have, for those of us who have faith in Christ, that you have shown us that mercy and brought us to faith in Christ, but we pray also that you would continue to do that work in us that you have promised to do, that you would move us into obedience, changing us into the image of your Son, Christ. And God, um, we pray for those around us who do not know Christ, that you would give them repentance, that you would bring them to faith, that you would draw them to yourself and show them mercy. We pray for many to be saved. And God, 
though we do not enjoy the thought of people being destroyed and, 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 and being under your wrath, we do give you glory for that. And we acknowledge that it is our um, earnings as well, what we deserve, if not for the mercy that you've shown us through the sacrifice of your son Christ. So we give you glory for that. We honor you. And it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, have a wonderful day, everyone. I will see you again.